Hello Calculus Kids, this is Mr. Bean, and in today's lesson we have an extremely important one today, it's called the chain rule, and most of the derivatives that we're going to take from here on out are going to deal with this. Uh, so you really got to understand this quite well, and so I am sorry, but you have a little bit more practice problems than you usually do. But to start us off, we have to remember and understand what a composite function is. A composite function is just a function inside of another function. So here, here are three quick examples. We've been doing this for a while now before you ever had calculus, but this here, let's recognize what the outside function is. So in this case, the f of x, the one on the outside, would just be a regular old sine x. And then the function on the inside there, so the g of x, would be x squared. So our next one, the f of x, the outside function, we always want to recognize the outside one first when we do these derivatives, which I'll show you in a second. So the outside function is just the square root of x. And then the inside function would be what we're plugging into that, which is a natural log of x. So here's an example with three different layers. So we'll call this f of g of x. No, f of g of h of x. There we go. So one, two, three parentheses. So we have an outside function, one inside of that one, and then another one inside of that one. So we'll notice that for this example, the outside function is the cosine. So it's cosine of, we'll just say x. And then what's, what are we plugging into this x? The inside of that is sine of x. And then inside of this, what we're plugging in is just a 5x. Okay, so there's our layers. So we're going to go through these layers and just kind of take one at a time the derivative of these layers. That's the chain rule. So the chain rule is how we take a derivative of a composite function and we start with the outside one, the f function, take its derivative and leave the inside alone, and then you multiply by the derivative of what's inside that function, the composite inside it. Okay, so write this down. And let me just show you with some examples how this works. First one. So the outside function in this case is just this blah 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 stuff raised to the fourth power. So what we'll do is we'll bring the four down to the front. So the derivative is f prime of x is four comes down to the front. Leave what's on the inside alone. So I'm not gonna touch that at all. x squared minus five and then raise it to the third power. So what I just did was I took the derivative of the outside one, the f, the f prime, and I left the inside function g alone. So I did not touch x squared minus five. Now I multiply by the derivative of what's ever on the inside. So the derivative of x squared minus five is just two x. And then we can simplify this just a little bit and end up with four times two x, that's eight x times x squared minus five, all raised to the third power. Now, if you think about what we just did, if we didn't have this chain rule, what we'd have to do is do x squared minus five multiplied out four times x squared minus five times x squared minus five times, and we have to multiply that out, take forever, and then use the power rule on the, all the terms. We could get the right answer, but this is so much faster to do. Next one here. So the outside function, we'll start with the outside, and that is just the square root. Okay, so remember, if we have the derivative of a square root, how do we do that? The, its derivative becomes one over two square root of x. If I go through all the steps of x to the one half and so forth, that's what it becomes. So let's jump to the derivative then. g prime of x equals, so this becomes one over two, and then that thing we don't touch, four x minus three, whatever's on the inside function, we don't do anything to it. Now we times it by what's on the inside that we didn't touch, the derivative of that, which is, in this case is just a four. And then we can, again, simplify this now a little bit. We have a four on top, a two on bottom, so that's going to cancel out and give us a two on top. And then you have the square root of four x minus three. There is our derivative. Okay, number three. This is probably the most commonly missed problem, this type of problem, and that's because that little squared thing there is really confusing for students. So let me show you. You have to think of it like this. Sine squared is this thing. It's sine of five x squared. 
So it's sine of 5x times sine of 5x. Now, when you can think of it this way, it might make it a little easier. So we have this squared layer, then we have the sine layer, and then the 5x. So here's a way I think of chain rule. Chain rule is like the onion rule, because you go layer upon layer upon layer, and you just keep removing layers until you start to cry. That's why I call it the onion rule. All right, so our derivative of h prime of x equals, so the 2 comes down to the front. 2, and then I'm going to leave this stuff alone in there. So it's still just going to stay sine of 5x. Now it's to the first power, so I don't need to write the power of 1. Times. Okay, now let's go in one layer. I take the derivative of sine. The derivative of sine is cosine, and I don't touch what's on the inside of that. So 5x. And now I times that by the derivative of what's on the inside of this, which is 5x. So the derivative of that is a 5. All right, let's try and simplify this now. And what do we end up with? Uh, it's just the 2 and the 5, right? 2 times 5 is 10. And then you have 10 sine of 5x times cosine of 5x. All right, there's our derivative. Probably the hard, not, I wouldn't say the hardest, just the ones that are missed the most by students who have to do the chain rule is for getting some of the layers and that squared or cubed if you have a trig function there. For the next two problems, this is not a mistake. They are exactly the same problem. I wanted to show you really quickly how there's different ways of doing logarithms. So the derivative of this, dy dx, is going to equal the natural log becomes 1 over that thing, so 1 over x cubed. Now we times it by the derivative of that inside, which is just 3x squared. Okay, and then that simplifies up to 3 over x. x squared over x cubed simplifies to that. So there's our derivative. What I wanted to show you is there's another way of doing logarithms. If all you have is a variable to an exponent, you can rewrite this as 3 natural log of x cubed, not x cubed, just 3 natural log of x. This is what's called the power rule for logarithms. Not, don't get that confused with power rule for derivatives. This is, see, these two things are equivalent. When we first started learning about logarithms, this was one of the rules that we learned, was you can bring a power and bring it to the front. Now if I take the derivative, so see, I haven't even taken the derivative yet. Now if I take the derivative, it's just 3 times the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. So then that just equals 3 over x. So I wanted you to see that there's multiple ways of doing this. You can always just do the chain rule if you forget that rule, but it is a little faster if you can see that to jump straight to our answer. Okay, let's do a confusing one. So this one, the 3 comes down. So for our derivative, f prime of x, we get 3 parentheses, the fraction, t squared plus 1 over 2t minus 5, and now it's to the second power, times, now you have to take the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside here is the quotient rule. So now we have to do pain in the butt quotient rule. Let's start this off. The derivative of the numerator then is going to be 2t times the, the bottom one left alone. So 2t minus 5 minus, and now I leave the numerator alone. So it's going to be t squared plus 1. And now I multiply out the derivative of the denominator, which is just a 2, all over 2t minus 5 squared. So what I did, it's like it's two different problems. I have the quotient rule here, and then I have the chain rule in the front here, where the 3 just came down, left it alone on the inside. Okay, that was the calculus part. Now for the algebra skills part, because I'm guessing in a multiple choice problem, they would never have this as their final answer. So I'm going to show you a couple ways that they might manipulate this and why this could be kind of difficult. First, I'm going to just simplify this numerator. So maybe just above it. Uh, hopefully this doesn't throw you off. So 2t two t, two t times 2t is 4t squared minus 10t. Uh, and then the 2 distributes and the negative distributes. So I get a minus 2t squared minus 2. And then that, so that numerator becomes uh, 2t squared minus 10t minus 2. All right, that's just this numerator right here. I wanted to do that so I don't have to rewrite this whole thing out. Okay, derivative f prime of x is going to equal. So I'm going to take the th that 3 I'm not going to touch. But I'm going to take the numerator here and factor out a 2. So that 2 is going to, I'm going to pull a 2 out and just bring it to the very, very front. I'll show you why. And then I, so then I have t squared plus 1 over 2t minus 5. That's all squared. And then I have my quotient rule. So my numerator is now this thing with a 2 that came out. 
So I have t squared minus 5t minus 1. And then on bottom, I have 2t minus 5 quantity squared. Okay. Again, this is probably still not their final answer. So I don't know if I gave you enough room on your notes. If I didn't, then maybe just go over here. I'm going to write it down below. So the derivative of this would be a 6 in front. Now watch this. I'm going to have this. Look at the numerator. This is 2t minus 5 squared times another 2t minus 5 squared. So that's 2t minus 5 to the fourth power. And on top, I have t squared plus 1 squared times this thing of t squared minus 5t minus 1. Now, any of these answers would be correct. I just want you to see how it's a little bit of a pain where you sometimes you have to use your algebra simplification to figure out which answer is the correct one for a multiple choice problem. You just have to manipulate it and keep going until you find that your answer is equivalent to theirs. All right, this one I wanted to talk about because of plugging in a number. When you take the derivative, which let's do that first, g prime of x is going to equal, this is product rule because I have something with a variable times something else with a variable. So we'll do each of these separately. The derivative of the first is just a 2. Leave the second one, 1 minus x, plus, now I leave the first one, and then times that by the derivative of the next piece is going to be 1 over 2 square root of 1 minus x times the derivative of the inside. That's where the chain rule comes in. The derivative of that inside is negative 1. Okay, some students are tempted to start simplifying things, which you could do. But when the problem talks about plugging a number in, and you just need to plug the number in, it really is not necessary to simplify this. A lot of mistakes are made in that simplification process. So my suggestion, when you have to plug a number in, plug it in as soon as you can, because then that x goes away, and it's just a number. So this is going to be 1 plus 3, because of the negative 3, plus 2 times negative 3 uh, times 1 over 2 square root of 1 plus 3. And then again, it still times this negative 1. All right, so then what does that give us? g prime of negative 3 is going to equal 1 plus 3, 4 square root of 4 is 2 times 2 is 4. Sorry, I'm doing that so fast. Minus because of the 6. But then that negative there is going to uh, make it a plus again. And then I have 1 over uh, 2 square root of 4. 2 times 2 is 4. And then this can simplify to 4 plus 6 fourths is 3 halves. And then if you add these together, 8, 3, 11 halves is going to be the answer. I'm doing that kind of quickly, but that's how we solve these. So again, just plug the number in as soon as you possibly can. Last set of problems. This is similar to what we did in our last unit where we had a table of values. Uh, so we're now going to just figure out what's the derivative of this. And notice it says f when it's f prime of 4. So let's first figure out what's f prime. f prime is going to be the 2 comes down to the front, and then it's just g to the first power times the derivative of the inside. The inside is g, so we have to do g prime. So now what is f prime of 4 equal? This is where you just use the values. So it's going to be 2 times g is 3 times g prime, which is negative 2. And so we have 6 times negative 2, in other words, negative 12. All right, next one. So remember, we're doing this square root stuff a lot, right? Square root of x derivative becomes 1 over 2 square root of x. So this is going to become f prime is going to equal 1 over 2 square root of h times the derivative of the inside, h prime. And then we start plugging in things we know. So f prime of 4, what's that going to equal? That gives us 1 over 2 square root of h, when x is 4, is a 9, times, and then h prime is a 5. So then that becomes 1 over 2 times 3 is 6. So 5 sixths is our answer for that one. Okay, last problem. And now we have more chain rule going on here. So we'd say f prime is going to equal h prime of g. So we didn't do anything to the g times, now we take the derivative of the g. There's our chain rule. So f prime of 4 would equal h prime of, what's g of 4? g of 4 is 3 times g prime of 4 is negative 2. Okay, so now we have h prime of 3. 
Where's h prime of three? So that's where this other row came in. When x is three, h prime is negative three. So that becomes a negative three times negative two, and therefore our answer is six. All right, you've got everything you need now for the chain roll. Extremely important lesson. Please take your time, practice these really well so you can rock that mastery check and then we can continue on learning some new stuff. All right, see you in the next lesson.